Welcome back to Scarply, you guys. We have another edition of Get Good Sam for you today. And this week we are doing Stukov. And as a support main, I have to admit I have not played him that much, but Kevin does and has graciously agreed to help me through learning him. So I'm going to hand it over to Kevin, who's going to be our trusty coach for the day. All right, so as I've mentioned before, the uh, only thing you really know, need to know about Stukov is that he's got a really big left hand and he can punch people and it's surprisingly good. So try to use that whenever available. Smack, uh, smack people in the face, got it. Yeah, smack people in the face. When they come at you, try not to walk into melee range and, and just punch them. But when they give you the opportunity, Stukov becomes a melee attack. Case that, in point. Yeah. Okay, so Stukov is kind of like an AoE sustain healer. Um, he's better on maps where you're going to be with your team because his heal spreads around to people around you. Um, less good at healing one person. Um, and he's better at sustain heals than burst heal, although he does have a burst heal option. Um, the other reason you want to pick Stukov is he's very good at area denial. So uh, if you're on a map that has like a, a uh, something that pushes, uh, you know, like a Punisher or like an Immortal, then he can uh, zone out the enemy from fighting it by putting his big, gross purple arm circle down around the gates. So that's the other really good reason why I want to pick Stuko. So, okay. Uh, his healing pathogen is his main ability, which is on his Q. He's got a pretty low cooldown. It puts a heal over time on your first target and spreads to anyone else. Uh, that it's on. So you can put it on yourself and it'll spread around to people around you, or you can put it on, you know, the front line and it'll spread to other people in the front line. Um, and while that heal over time is happening, you can push your D key, which is bio kill switch, uh, which will give a big burst heal to anyone that the heal over time is on. Uh, that's got a 15 second cooldown, very, very long. Um, so you want to be very judicious about when you use it. Uh, his W is his what is definitely his weakest ability. He's kind of like a slow skill shot um, that goes not not that far, doesn't travel very fast. Um, when it hits someone, it'll put a slow on them that gets a little bit stronger with time. Um, if you use your bio kill switch, uh, not only will it kind of detonate all your heals, giving that big burst heal, but it'll also detonate your weighted pustule. So if it's on them, it'll give them uh, a burst of damage and uh, a more significant slow. But for the most for most situations, you want to be saving your bio kill switch um, for big burst heals. And then his last ability, um, which is his E key, um, puts a big gross purple circle on the ground. Now that does AoE damage, and you can use it to kill minions and things like that, but it's also got a very long cooldown, and it uh, it doesn't really do that much damage. So if you just use it to clear waves, it's like it's always going to be off cooldown, and uh, it kind of puts you in a dangerous position as well, because you kind of root yourself and silence yourself while you're channeling it. Uh, so mainly you want to use that for area denial. You want to put it down in chokes, places where you think the enemy is going to come through, and you can use that to um, deny them entry. Because if they want to walk through it, they can't use their offensive abilities, they can't use their defensive abilities, they can't use their mobility abilities, and uh, it's just absolutely miserable to play against. It is. Can confirm. Yeah, I think everyone kind of dreads the Stukov circle. For sure. So those were be kind of like the, the basics to Stukov. Um, you generally want to hang out in the back line, just keep everybody topped up, you know, draw out fights if you can, use your E to deny uh, areas, and throw out your W whenever it's available. You know, it's it's really not going to save you if you get dived on. To be honest, your your big punch is probably better in that regard, um, but it can help secure kills and things like that. So what do you think, Kevin? Are we ready for a match? <laughs> I think we might be ready for a match. He does have a very com a somewhat complicated um, selection of talents, but I will try not to steer you wrong. Yeah, don't let me down, Kevin. Now, would you say that he is your favorite support? Um, I'd say on in general, he's my favorite support. I mean, he's got like he's got character. He's um, got a really interesting set of abilities 
He's not just a heal bot. Um, I love that he can really contribute to objectives and, and camps just by walking up and punching them. Uh, I really like him, but he's also quite difficult to play optimally. You know, like whenever I'm playing Stukov, I, I never feel like I did everything I could have or that I didn't make any mistakes. And I think that is a sign of like a really good support because he's got serious depth. All right, no tank. We can do this. Gaslow could be a tank, right? Yeah, that's totally a thing. Uh, yeah, we just trust his turrets. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit tricky for you because everyone on your team is made of paper. Well, that just means lots of healing. I mean, if they live long enough for you to heal them. This is true. Now, what does help is that Battlefield of Eternity is one of Stukov's best maps because it has a pushing objective and it also has the teams group up uh, for his heals. So those factors are definitely in your favor. Guys, oh my god, I didn't put his loadout to the Luchiwawa. We have to restart. God damn it. Nah, I think we're just gonna have to suffer. What do you got, Pleb Horse? Ooh, Pleb Horse. Okay, so your level one talents, first of all, you've got Spine Launcher, which is a passive ability. It makes your, instead of having a big punch, you shoot out a spiny thing out of your arm which uh, instantly makes it a bad pick because you don't get to punch people. You don't get to hear that great sound effect. Um, it's okay if you think that you're not going to be able to get any auto attack damage out at all, um, depending on the enemy composition. Like if they're just too scary that, you know, you're, you're never going to be... If you're in melee range, you're dead, as opposed to being able to punch them. Um, I don't really like it. I think that there are better options in this tier. The slow is, is not really a factor. It just sort of helps you position a bit safer, but you really shouldn't be that close to the front line anyway. Fetid Touch is something you could take to help with the targeted excision build, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later at level 7. Um, it's a quest for just hitting people with your W, basically. Um, it reduces the, the cooldown, and you do not want to be that close to the front line. Um, yeah, so I mean, reducing the cooldown is useful for that build, which I will explain later, but I don't think it's generally what you want to be doing. Again, I think that's kind of a boost to his weakest ability, which isn't really what, it, what you want to focus on. Um, growing Infestation, I think, is generally his best talent on this tier, certainly the most picked talent. Um, it makes it so that your cooldown is even longer on your E, but it makes it so that the area expands over time. And you get to the point where you have uh, a really respectable um, area on that. So they have an even tougher time. You can block off like larger and larger choke areas. Um, and just the difference between someone being in the silence ring and out of the silence ring, pretty enormous. Uh, so I usually like to take that one. Uh, Pop and Pustules is one of those like try hard quests where you. Um, you can't die when you're using it. You have to detonate a bunch of weighted pustules. Which again, not really what I think you want to be doing with Stu Cub. You want to be generally saving your uh, bio kill switch for um, uh, for his burst heals. So I would always generally pick Growing Infestation at level 1. Alright, let's do it. So one thing that I see that you're doing, and that's something that a lot of Stukovs do early on, is try to use your E on cooldown, just when you see like a group of enemies, you feel like, oh, I can get my, my E off. It's really what, not what you want to be doing. You, you want, don't want to use it reactively, you want to use it proactively. You want to see them coming, you want to see, you want to expect where they're going to attack from, and then you want to lay that down. Because if you just use it like when you see some people in an area, they're just going to walk out of it and it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be terribly effective. They're just going to be all over you because you can't move or do anything when you're in that position. So you generally want to lay that down before the fight starts and then let go of it once things get ugly. Um, so at level four, the talent I usually take is one good spread. Uh, it's a talent pick because it just uh, reduces the cooldown of your healing ability. 
uh, after it spread to a bunch of allies. So if you're constantly with your team and healing them, which is kind of what you want to be doing anyway, then uh, you are getting uh, mana back as well as a lower cooldown. Yeah, so thrall, so thrall the big left hand. Um, top off is not a very good talent in my opinion. It heals people more if they have high health. So in the situations where they don't need a lot of healing, you give them more healing. Uh, could be good, but I don't think it helps you in, in the most dire of situations. Um, Biotic Armor, also not that great. Ooh, this is a great time for your E. Just put that down right in that choke. Yeah, it's a great position. Oh, uh. Oh, oh, that makes uh, me so sad. That so That's so painful to watch. Yeah, so Biotic Armor gives a very hefty armor boost, but only to the first target you hit with it, which kind of limits the situation. It makes you kind of play in non-optimal ways, because you're like starting to use it as a damage mitigation tool instead of like a healing ability. It gets kind of complicated. And Vigor's Reuptake is also a viable pick. Um... It gives you a quest for doing your burst heals with your uh, trait, and uh, it's better if you expect the game to go long. So if you're on like Volskaya or something, then you can take Vigorous Reuptake. Well, I don't and, expect uh, that, so I think I'll take one good spread. Okay. So here's where you can kind of help out with your with your punch, because you really do a respectful amount of damage. You just want to be careful about the enemy, obviously. Yeah, so that's one downside to your uh, to your E is that it, it roots you in place. So Janin can just you know drop drop a, a blizzard on top of you, and there's not really anything you can do about it. So again, you need to be very judicious about when you're going to use that ability. Next one. All right. So next one is where you, this is where you would take targeted excision if you're doing that build. Um, which I mentioned earlier, it is a quite a complicated but high reward sort of setup. If you have Weighted Pustule, which is your W, on one and only one opponent, then it reduces the cooldown of your D uh, quite dramatically. So you can get like tons and tons of burst heals. So if you're living the dream, oh, that's 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 a little that's a little close. Yeah. If you're living the dream, you can, you know, put your heal over time on all your, your friends. You can W one person, you know, their tank in the front line or something safely. Um, pop your trait and then be ready to do a big burst heal all over again. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. Um, you find yourself, you know, in positions where, oh, you accidentally hit two people with your W. Or, sure, you hit someone with your W, but in that time, your Q fell off everyone. You know, it's... Uh, Oh, look at you go. Look at you go, you brave, brave woman. Hey, the only one who's more Rambo than me is the Sylph. Yeah, well. How much you can do about that? Um, so that's where you would take that talent. I think it's kind of more of an advanced option, and not even necessarily the best uh, of the available options, even if you are good at it. Uh, so I would stay away from that. So, within um, my reach? Well, let's see. So, long pitch gives you a comedically long range on your W. Uh, so, that's, uh, again, kind of improving one of what I think is his worst abilities. Um, within my, my reach is kind of my default pick, which increases the range on your E, which allows you to position more safely, which is very important. Um, so, you can be way off in the back line and still being able to use your E to defend... Uh, Choke points and stuff. Um, then it hungers just reduces the uh, cooldown when you're hitting enemy heroes. Oh. Ooh, if, you get, if you did the punch, you would have been out of there. Yeah, so it hungers is each time you get that uh, tick from uh, the lurking arm, it reduces its cooldown and restores man. 
Oh, okay. Not dead, but not as high impact as you really want. Now, what uh, the crowd favorite, what do we do for the ult? Okay, so this, this is kind of like an easy choice to be honest, but just because they both have pretty much exactly the same purpose. Um, they are both uh, basically panic, panic buttons to help you disengage from fights. Um, you take Flailing Swipe if you expect multiple people to come after you, and Massive Shove if they have one enemy that you think is going to try and dive in and you want to isolate. Um, generally, I like Massive Shove, and I think Massive Shove is your choice here, because really only Thrall is trying to get up in your face. And this one has a really, really short cooldown, so you can use it uh, quite often. So anytime Thrall comes at you, you can just push the R button, and you'll just knock them way back into a wall. And don't be afraid to use that not for, you know, maximum comedic value. Oh yeah, you wanna lay down you wanna lay down your E there and that'll really if it was a little further up it'd be better, but you'd be really zoning them out of being able to uh do a significant amount of damage. To your immortal. Yeah, so even if you use your R just, you know, and knocks them back a little way, that's still good because uh is you basically get a stun off like once you hit them into a wall. Again, it kind of... Oh, too short. Er, yeah, its range is really it's pretty respectable, but not quite that long. But yeah, just smacking someone into the nearest wall is, is a pretty decent use of that uh, ability. Because again, cooldown really, really low. It's going to be back up in two seconds, one second. So you can use that every fight, multiple times a fight. Not something you need to be precious about. I can see this too. If you're if you're contesting a boss or something, and you need somebody to get out of the circle, I can see that being useful. Yeah, I mean, if you have somebody else who's up there. Oh, you mean your your lurking arm? Yeah, that'll that'll solve your problem pretty quick. I'd be giving you tips, but this is kind of like a, uh, a, a an awkward matchup to say the least, considering yeah. your your double spec, your half support set up here. Yeah, see there you go. You saving all these people, some sort of goddamn hero. Oh, this is more work than it. Feels like when you're playing him. <laughs> well, it ain't Lily, I'll tell you that much. But Lily's my you, favorite! <laughs> you do get a spam Q. Pretty much spam Q all the time. Because once you take one good spread, like, look at how much... Like, you're healing pretty much on cooldown, and this really isn't uh, affecting your mana cost at all. Alright, so get some distance, and you're going to want to put your, uh, your lurking arm down in the choke, where all those people are coming out of. Oh, I put it in the wrong spot. That is correct. Can't go punch him. Punch roll. Oh, this guy's low. Yeah, see, when you use that reactively, it just doesn't do anything. They'll just walk right out of it. Aww. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that is not how you, uh... point a kill, I'm afraid. It doesn't quite do enough damage to finish a kill. <laughs> Lesson learned. I don't think it does any damage, really. Let me check. It deals a very small amount of damage. What do we got for 13 here? Alright, so I personally like uh, Reactive Ballista Spores. Maybe not the best against this team composition. It's when you uh, hit low at all your team needs you. It's when you um, hit low health, it, it sends out a, a bunch of W's at nearby enemies, um, which can help your team, help you escape. Usually pretty, quite good. Um, your enemy team has a lot of uh, 
ranged characters, so that might not work that well for you. Oh boy, that guy just stood right in it. Alright, get some punches in. You're gonna want your DPS on this guy. Look at that go. Yeah, it's another downside of that ability, is it really it roots you in place for a very long time. Um, low blow makes your E do more damage, which is not really what you want it to be doing. Uh, lurking spines kind of makes your your silent circle stick around for a while. It's interesting, but kind of like a, a middling utility. It's not always useful. Virulent relax reaction is kind of like if you want to be more. It's more of like a playmaker ability. Um, it's quite a dramatic effect. So if you have your W on someone, and they're in your E, so you have to hit them with W, and then hit them with your E, and then pop your trait. Oh, that's, that's a bad position for you. Damn it! <laughs> and then, so if you hit someone with your W, get them in your E, and then pop your D, then you hit them with a root, and it's a really long root. I think it's like two seconds. Um, so that can just be like game winning right there. So that's a strong option, but it's pretty complicated. Again, Stukov has a bunch of kind of like combos that you can do if you're more of an advanced player. But I would say generally my pick is reactive ballista floor, reactive ballisto spores. But against this enemy team, you could maybe go with low blow or lingering spines. Kevin, the guy who died the most said rip. Well, I mean, yeah, he's uh, eulogizing himself. Okay, so which one in this case would you take? Um, I suppose I would take low blow, just based on the way you're playing. You're, you've been using it to try and finish off uh, opposing enemy. Oh, oh boy. Alright. Use that R. And you're dead. Oh. Oh. I'm loving them here. Okay. Oh, maybe still. Wait, I should be dead. I really should be. You should be. So you can put up some pretty serious healing numbers with this guy. Oh, absolutely. He's he's very respectable in terms of that. Because again, it's like he's healing the whole team. He can do big heals. He can top people up. Alright, so you want to use your E to cut off one of these chokes. Except now you're going to get stuck in the frost. And use your R to push them away. And you're done. But now we have time to talk about your 16 talent. Yay! Yay. There's, there's an upside to everything. That there is. Alright, so Super Strain uh, gives anyone who has your Q on them uh, a nice uh, big heal when they get stunned or rooted. So your enemy team uh, has uh, a root in the form of Ring of Frost and a root in the form of Thrall's W. So... Oh, and you have some stuns from Oriel. So that's a possibility. I tend to take that against like double tank compositions, or if they have like a lot of roots and stun. So it's a, it's a decent one. Um, Universal carriers can spread your heal around continually, but it's kind of redundant with one good spread because the cooldown so low. So I don't usually take that one. Um, Pox Populi is uh, one of my favorites. It's very popular, to excuse the pun, which makes it that when you dent your your you when you use your bio kill switch it doesn't actually remove the heal over time it resets it um, so that's usually my favorite pick that makes you not have to concentrate as much about you know detonating your Q at the wrong time or, or not getting the full amount of value out of it Nice one. Oh, that punch felt really good. 
Oh, good job. Alright, we got a bit of a turnaround coming here. Core now! With some salty language. Hey, my, my innocent ears, people! Or eyes. Eyes, I guess. I imagine it would be your eyes. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna make it to your to the core, but okay. You wanna face tank this uh, keep? That's fine. Maybe a little bit of time. You might make it. Oh, I wanted that so bad. Yeah, Rag's gonna be pretty upset that you didn't heal him. I wanna punch that core. And we're We gotta get you away from these people, Sam. I know, we gotta get me out of bronze, man. This is the point. So, we can talk about your level 20. Alright, well, let's uh, do that if we if we get there. <laughs> I think you'll get there. So, the level 20 kind of doesn't really matter. Stukov's level 20 is like... Everyone else gets a power boost at 20. Stukov really does not. All of his 20 options are kind of side grades. Um, so you're going to get a boost to your R, uh, your heroic, which makes it travel faster. So you're stunned for less time, but they're also stunned for less time. Um, and it can reduce its cooldown uh, to like basically nothing if it pushes them for a long time. So again, that ability's got a really short cooldown already, and making it travel faster is not necessarily better. Um, if you took the other level 10, if you took uh, Flailing Swipe, then you can get Cold Chaos, where you get, um, instead of swiping three times in quick succession, you can do individual swipes, it gets charges. Um, that one's pretty okay. You can actually do a neat trick where you um, use your heroic, then when the level 20 talent comes in, you take it, and you immediately get some additional charges. Uh, so you can kind of like use your ult back to back to back one time. Okay, so also bio explosion switch, which um, makes it so your trait also detonates lurking arm, which will silence and slow people within it. Which again is just one more additional complication that maybe you don't need in your life. So which one would you take here if we weren't about to lose? Um, I usually take whatever the uh, heroic upgrade is. Whichever one I took, I usually just upgrade that. Okay. Well, that game was fun. Well, I mean, first of all, I was talking in your ear the whole time and distracting you. That is that is the setup that we are currently enjoying. Which is normally fine. I. I hate to blame Stukov's other players. Well, really uh, sure. The Stukov is real complicated. Like, let's not, let's not mince words about that. And I think maybe that's part of the reason I haven't played him so much. Because um, he does strike me as, like, my impulses when I'm playing a healer, I kind of have to reprogram when I play him. Uh, with Lily, you know, I can run around in and amidst the fight because I'm fast and I can dart in and out and I can blind people and things like that. So I think I'm taking that what, mentality what, into Stukov. What, what other healer are you doing that with? Stop doing that with other healers. <laughs> well, I do it mostly with Lily, who is my like default. I want to heal and I want to be good and I'll play Lily. Um... I also do that with Charism, like I'll dive in with Charism. Uh, okay, that that makes that makes more sense. All right. Yeah. So he, those those are my two like where I'll get into things. Um, he's also a strong punch man. Yeah. He is, and I and I love him for it. All right. Well, that game was a little demoralizing, but we're gonna try another one, and this time Kevin's going to help me, not only with talent explanations, but how to actually use those abilities and talents and see what we can do.
yeah, let's uh, let's focus on positioning. Let's focus on judicious use of your um, lurking arm, judicious use of bio kill switch, and uh, liberal use of your Q and W whenever they just happen to be available. Well, we have a tank this time. Nice. If he goes tank, I hope he does. Oh, uh, this is bronze silver esque quick match, so. You know, no guarantees. No. But again, this is another good map for you because when the Punisher is pushing, pushing, you can put down your uh, your E and block off uh, their attempts to to kill it. So when you are putting down your lurking arm in this situation, you want to kind of put it um, between the fort, the enemy fort, and their gate, like in that kind of area there. Um, that's like basically the melee range around uh, where the immortal is going to be standing. Alternatively, you can use it to try and block off that area between the um, healing fountain and the fort and the gate, that little zone. Um, depending on where they're standing, depending on how they're, you know, positioning, because uh, that's another you know high-profile thing they might be going for is trying to get a, a little sip. So you're going to need to be really careful about stitches because your your disengages, as I mentioned, are not mobility based. They're slowing down the enemy or pushing the enemy away. If stitches grabs you, you're you are in a a real heap of trouble. Lunara as well, like she's going to be able to bounce all around. If you slow her, that might not necessarily help. The Nubrak, he's going to be diving into you, stunning you. Illidan is going to be... Yeah, so you're going to need to position very defensively for this one, I think. I think I'm just going to go with the same kind of build here. Um, I really like this growing infestation talent. So I'm going to take that. Five, four, three, and I didn't switch my mount again. So it's Reggie the Reg Horse. Unfortunate. Spent so long grinding to get that little chihuahua, and I don't even put him in my loadout. Ooh, I don't want to go over there. No, you don't. I'm sure you're curious what's in that bush, but you should not check. Even now, you should be positioning behind uh, your friend. Behind uh, Gul'dan. He has at least kind of a reason to be up close because he's trying to throw out cues and stack his quests and things. You have no reason to be up there. Oh, I went too far. Oh no. Yes, you did. Again, you want to be aware of your mini map, right? You want to be looking and saying, okay, we got two top, we got one bottom, we got one here, so where is Illidan? <laughs> you want to do your inner Maya. Where's Illidan? <laughs> That's another one I haven't played, uh, really, was Maev. I was super excited when she came out, and then I was kind of not impressed enough to want to play her. Yeah, you don't want to keep your queue up on, uh, on Gul'dan, because, you know, any healing you give him, if you give him he's going to turn into mana, he's going to turn into deeps. Alright, so someone's going to want to circle down bot, because uh, you lost your solo laner down there. So try and disengage and uh, head on down. No stitches, bad stitches. That doesn't look like you're heading on down. Yeah, but I'm the healer who's not really going to be useful down there. It doesn't matter, you're a body that can soak. Experience, uh... is, all experience is literally all that matters right now. Oh, that's a nice one. Alright, make sure you can heal up. Help straight, there you go. Good job. Okay, I'm gonna go, I guess, we'll have some fun with Lunara. Yeah, you just killed three people. And you're a, you're losing an experience. Alright, so you can put down your E. Not a bad spot. And you can really just turn the tide of the team fight. Like, that's such an impactful ability. Well, look at me! He was on everybody. 
Use on everybody. Your job ain't done until everybody's full. See, there I was waiting till my D was closer to cooldown, but should I not? No, you basically just want to spam your Q on cooldown, just all the time. Especially once you hit level 4, you get one good spread. Because then that reduces the, uh, the cooldown and, and it doesn't even take the full 10 seconds. So this is one situation where if you want to like use your E to clear the wave, you can stand way back. That's the opposite of what I was saying. You can stand way <laughs> back and then use this. Use that to stay close to your towers while also clearing the wave. Now would you still go massive shove here? I might go flilling swipe because they're they have so many people that are gonna try and jump on you. Yeah, see there you go. So you're using you're you're paying attention to your uh, bio kill switch because you're waiting for your Q to spread to as many people as possible. Uh oh. Yeah, no, he's dead. Just leave him. This cigar is very industrious. I like it. I was gonna say she's uh she has thoroughly creeped this area. All right, so we start punching dudes, healing people. All right, so you can use your... Yeah, there you go. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Just leave that there. Just leave that there. All right, now go in. Big burst heal on there. Maybe use your swipe. This is this is not a bad swipe position. Oh, he gonna die. Oh, he gonna die. Don't worry about that. Here's the thing. I mean, you're a support, and you're supposed to be helping your team. But also, sometimes they're just going to die. And you have to be at peace with that. I'm not, though. But I do a lot of times say in my head, like, you can't out-heal bad positioning. Yeah, no, so when people are like, oh, why didn't you heal me? It's like, I was, but you went in for, like, 3v5 and died. I like to see that you're um, clearing waves, incidentally, in your free moments, when you're in between things, waiting for things. See, your influence is rubbing off, Kevin. That is good. I'm glad to hear that. Oh no. It's gonna be... It's gonna be bad. Yeah, you're gonna... You're gonna wanna not... You're gonna wanna not be here. You're gonna... Oh, do him. Do him. He might live. Ah, I couldn't get the D off in time. You don't want to try and help him either. You can help these people. You can help these people, Sam. What's wrong with you? I tried. Yeah, just um, choke bottom lane, top lane, or bottom lane, mid lane, wherever you feel is safe. Again, if you use your E from a, a long distance, you can kind of clear the wave while staying safe. So you can see Stukov really does not have mana problems. You can just be, you know. Queuing W E all day, all night. I do appreciate Especially that about him. Yeah, I mean it's to a lesser extent if you don't take one good spread, but in general he's not really constrained. It's one of the reasons why he's uh, one of the top tier supports right now. Don't be too afraid to punch Illidan when he gets close to you. You don't need to run up there and try and do it. And yeah, your heroic is is very much a uh, a reactive ability. You don't want to be using it proactively, really. Why? Because he wanted to do something. Uh. Because you have to do something. I wish to be done with this. I will break you. Well, I'm just gonna live. Correct decision. Again, whenever possible, you want to be punching the uh, the enemy immortal because your DPS is very respectable. This is very foolish by your team because you had two dead and they were as five. I did what I could. Yeah, but you could. Could it, you did have one charge of your your heroic there, so you could have used that to swat them away. 
wouldn't necessarily have saved him. Fair. That did not accomplish much, but I'm glad I made you feel better. I always say that if some teams were just more communicative, like, they'd, they'd stomp. And the only thing really holding a team back sometimes isn't the other team, it's just that that people oh. just don't have rhythm or like they don't oh. sync together. Communication is the whole thing. Like right now Varian's leaving while everybody else is pushing forward with catapults. That's why I actually am a big fan of the voice chat ad because now I can't picture the game without it. See I have 103k but I don't feel like I've done that much healing. It doesn't it doesn't feel like you're doing that much healing. It's quite like Lucio. Like, Lucio... I always feel like I'm just skating around, not doing much. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a pretty apt comparison. Like, it's just... Because a lot of healing, like, you heal one dude, and then... The healing spreads to other people without your input, really. Wait, wait, wait. Is your E in the choke? Heal everybody. Is your first heal in three seconds ends up. Nice one. Okay, now you clear the Punisher and don't die. No, guys, what are you do what are we do what are you doing? They are counter pushing, which is actually a valid idea. But we'll see if the map works out in our favor. Alright, punch that guy. Punch him. There we go. Wow. Yay, team! You did it. We, we did. I'm not sure how, but we did. Happens often uh, on these things. 100k healing. MVP. Almost 120. Damn. Well, I mean, it was a very long game. It was like level 25 or something absurd. Aw, still not on the board. Yeah, so that's uh, Stukov. I, I respect him more than I like him. And what I mean by that is, now that I've played him a little bit more, I can respect A, the amount of damage he can do, and B, the, for someone who can get his combos right and kind of has a little bit more brain power than I think I have, um, can really do a lot with him. And I think that's why you're good at him, because you're good at, like, timing your cooldowns and, like, knowing when not to go in, which is a big problem for me. But I like him. I'm just not sure if my playstyle and him mesh. I'd have he's to. A very, he's a very like cerebral kind of like detached, like uh, healer. Like he, he he's definitely not like your Lilies. He's not your Karazims, where you're, you know, you you have the ability to make kind of like split second decisions, jump in and out uh, of combat. He's you know, staying safe. The situations change. You apply to the situation, you know, your long, long cooldowns kind of like Uther, so you have to, it's about choices less than it is about reaction. Oh, oh, definitely, especially with that E, it's like, oh, there's a whole bunch of people coming toward us, I'm just going to E because that's going to help. And I think you're right, um, I need to like go into a choke point being like, okay, I'm going to put my E here, and I have to have already thought of that instead of going in and being like, oh, they're all over there, let's put the E over there. Because then, by then, they'll have moved. So... Like, by then, they'll have moved, and if you're using it because they're coming in at you, the last thing you want to be doing is rooting yourself, standing stock still. Well, That's... fellow scrubs, I think I'm going to have to practice Stukov a little bit more before I can say that I got good. Um, but with Kevin's advice, I think I can make this work. But uh, we'll catch you next time for another Get Good Sam.
please let us know if there's someone you would like to learn, if there's someone you'd like to see me play or like to see the guys coach me on. Uh, let us know on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, and we'll be sure to get that recorded for you. Anyway, guys, until next time, see ya. Get good.